one. Uh, I'm kind of doing a throwback for my tech talk. You know, not any new technologies, but rather C slash C++, um, an older technology. So um, I'll start with just like some history. Um, the origins of C, um, well, C was actually first developed uh, for Unix in order to help create the Unix um, whole operating system, um, which is, you know, we all use Unix, so it's close to home. Um, and it was developed um, by these two, Unix was developed by Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie. Um, that's their picture right there, those two guys. Um, and uh, so I mean, originally Unix was written in assembly language, but uh, they wanted to make it, uh, rewrite it with an actually high level uh, programming language. And so they uh, were going to use B, which was one of the languages at the time, but uh, they realized it wouldn't take advantage of some of the new features that their uh, computer had. So they decided to actually come up with this whole new language called C. Uh, in order to write or rewrite Unix. So Dennis Ritchie receives the credit as being the author, um, and he wrote it 1969 to 1972, and is actually implement, first implemented in 1972 on the uh, DEC PDP-11 computer. That's a picture of the computer. Don't you love old computers with their uh, massive boxes and like whole units for monitors? Uh, but anyway, and in case you're wondering what the name C comes from, uh, it's just actually, it's the successor to B, so it's the letter after B is C. Uh, so that's why it's called C. Uh, and okay, it wasn't really designed to be used like in its modern uses originally of, you know, for everything, uh, writing all kinds of new software. It was just, just Unix, that's the reason they wrote it. But all the same, it started being used for all these, uh, for other platforms, and they realized that. So in 1978, these two men, Brian Kernighan and Dennis Ritchie, published the first publicly available description of C language, uh, which is now known as KNR, which was used for a long time as being the standard for C, just like KNR standard. Um, and it was actually re-standardized later in 1989 by the American National ANSI. Uh, and so yeah, that's history, a little bit of history about C. Now let me move on to actually uh, looking at a basic C program. This is just the famous hello world that exists in every programming language. Um, and so a C program will always start with these number include statements or macros. Uh, macro is just kind of like, kind of like a, a global variable, but you can, it's like substituted into the program um, everywhere thereafter and you change it in the global scope. Um, and then, you know, after that you're gonna have um, any functions that you want to use inside the pre program, the C program, have to be declared prior to that. So like at the very top, there's not any of them here, I'll show you that later, but um, you'd have to declare them before main, and then there's main, uh, which is just the main program. Every C program to run has to have a main, and inside main is the code that will be executed, um, <coughs> including any of the other functions. And then after that, you would follow that with <coughs> uh, the definition of any functions that you actually want to call inside of main. So, um, some base features of C, much of this will look familiar, but uh, data types, integer, float, void, character, and double, uh, float and double are just decimals. Double is a larger decimal, um, can store much more data. Um, but you have to actually declare this for every variable that you're declaring. Um, you have to say like integer x equals number. You can't just say var x equals number. Um, C can interpret that. That's something for more interpreted languages to do, but C can't do that. Um, yeah, Func same thing, you have to declare data types for functions. Both the inputs that you put in have to be like integer x, integer y, so the parameters. Um, also, you have to start the function, whatever it's called, with a data type that's going to be the thing that's returned from it. If you don't return anything, you can use void. It's so like void function name or, you know, Otherwise, it would have to be like integer or character uh, function name. And arrays, okay, arrays have to be all of one type. Um, you can use a bracket to actually say in advance how large the array is going to be, and it can't really exceed that. Well, I mean, you can make it exceed that later, but um, it will set the size, preset the size of the array, and directly in memory, that it's going to be 10 um, bytes long, you know, 
and all integers. Okay, I mean, of course, it's got a false blocks. Every language does. Uh, while loops, I think C started the basic for loop, which was just the, um, everyone's seen it in uh, JavaScript, the uh, for, you know, char i equals blah uh, condition and then incrementer. So, oh yeah, and then the other interesting thing about C is that it has pointers to physical addresses in memory, um, which are kind of like, you know, you can um, change lists and, um, and objects in, in JavaScript, um, but they're mutable. The same thing uh, for C, you can make pointers like integers or uh, characters and just directly change them by, using their, by changing their pointers inside of functions, for instance, or uh, other places. What's been written in C? Well, tons of stuff. Uh, I mentioned Unix. Uh, most of Linux is written in C. Uh, Python and most JavaScript interpreters. So like, actually, it's kind of interesting that more recent languages, uh, modern languages, the compilers or interpreters were written using C. So C is kind of like the building block on which they're created. Uh, all of these things were written in C, basically. And browsers, almost all browsers use at least some C. Um, so what are some pros and cons of C? Well, it's faster. It is the fast. It's, it's, fa it's faster than all of like you know Python, JavaScript, any any language that comes after, just because it's closer to um, what the computer is actually doing. Um, so it doesn't have to actually interpret that, which takes time and is expensive. Um, plus, it doesn't have to be recompiled uh, every time. You can just run the program once you compile it. Um, it gives you more control of what happens at a lower level. That's true also. Um, and also, like I find, and I think it's true, that like if you learn a language like C, even just as for fun, maybe, uh, it'll help you understand a little better what happens inside the computer, because it's not abstracted away as it is in like uh, other languages. I mean, you know, like JavaScript, for instance. Um, but of course, the cons are that it is harder to learn. The rules are a little more sophisticated. It'll take more effort and time. Um, that's just how it is. Um, yeah, it lacks the abstraction. I think I mentioned that. And you know, it used to be that it was a big deal at superior speed because uh, processes were slower. But now that processes are so much faster and getting faster all the time, you know, it's not that big of an advantage anymore. And yeah, security. So I'll just briefly touch on C++. C++ was just uh, an attempt to expand and kind of uh, modernize C, uh, done by a certain Bjarn Struzup, also working for Bell Labs um, in 1982. Um, and some of the things are that it includes are you know object-oriented programming, also classes, uh, most notably. Uh, everything on the screen, including expanded libraries, constants, overloading, and virtual functions. So yeah, uh, my conclusion on C, and you can make whatever conclusion you want. This was just mine. Uh, was that it, that C and, and you know C plus plus I guess as well have actually been kind of eclipsed uh, by other languages now, um, more modern ones like you know JavaScript, Python, ones that use a lot more abstraction are easier to use uh, for for developing you know the most modern software and uh, technologies. But you have to remember that. A lot of them are built on C or built using C, um, and you know, modern software. I think just like a huge amount of it, possibly the majority, was was written in C. Um, so in a way, uh, this was just my kind of abstract thought of the day. Was um, it's kind of like how programming started with machine code, and they had assembly languages to abstract away a lot of that, and then you know, programming more high order programming languages. C is kind of like a step in that. Uh, Modern languages are kind of like the next step from that, in that um, C was a lot less abstract than they are even, and uh, you know, so so it's kind of like another link in the chain of abstraction that just continues to go up from the lower level computer. So if I have any time, I could like to do a quick coding demonstration. Uh, do I have time? Okay, I'll make it quick. Okay. Here is a C program to solve factorials. And Can you make it larger? Uh, well, hold on a second. First, let me get this over here as well. Uh, 
Okay, and so um, it's kind of what I mentioned before, the prototyping of the function that's going to be used at the beginning, uh, recursive function, um, the main, and everything. So what's going to happen is I'm going to now um, compile this program, because you have to always compile C source code. It's just text at the current time. So I will C++ um, factorial, if I could type right now. Uh, you'll notice it runs without any errors. Now if I ls, um, you will see, is there an 8.0? No? It should be showing up. It's showing up on mine. I'll show you this. It shows up in the GUI, a.out. That is the new compiled C source code. So I'm going to run that like this um, with a dot slash a.out. Uh, well, maybe if I select it first. And now it's running the program. This is how C takes input. So I'm going to enter uh, 4. Factorial 4 is 24. Okay, so that's a sample C program. And that's also my presentation.